I'm Dr. Gary Clayman of the Clayman Thyroid Cancer Center. In this video, we're going to talk about why would we consider radioactive iodine in the treatment of your thyroid cancer. One of the really important things about thyroid cancer is this concept of radioactive iodine. I'm a little bit confused, and I want to ask you a couple questions about radioactive iodine. I understand it's like the perfect chemotherapy for this. So tell me about radioactive iodine. How does that work for thyroid cancer? So if you think about it, the thyroid gland needs iodine in order to make thyroid hormone. So that's the most important concept. And thyroid cancer, the most common thyroid cancers, are so similar to normal thyroid tissue that they also take up iodine just like thyroid cells do, normal thyroid cells. So if you give radioactive iodine, you take that pill, it circulates through the body, and it goes right to thyroid tissue and thyroid cancer. So if, uh, if, if I need to, and you would do that because I need to kill some more thyroid cells that are left behind after surgery. Is that why we're doing it? There's two purposes of radioactive iodine pill. One, to kill normal thyroid tissue, and, but most importantly, the second thing is, is to circulate to the body to the microscopic potential thyroid cancer cells and give them a killing dose of radiation so that they disappear. So iodine, we put, we put iodine in salt because our thyroid needs iodine to make hormone. thyroid hormone. So we can give a radioactive, a poisonous isotope, I guess they call it, of iodine, which will kill thyroid cells, no matter where they're at, even if they're like spread to my lung, theoretically. Theoretically. So how do you know if I, my thyroid cancer, I have my thyroid cancer removed, how do I know if I need radioactive iodine? Does everybody with thyroid cancer need radioactive iodine then? So the good thing is I think we've gotten smarter. And so we used to give everyone with thyroid cancer radioactive iodine. Now we know that everyone clearly doesn't need it. There are only a couple different reasons to give radioactive iodine. One, if the thyroid cancer, so this is your thyroid gland, if the thyroid cancer has broken outside of this, it's grown outside of the thyroid itself, and it's pushed, for example, on the muscles on top or behind it, then that's an indication for radioactive iodine. Frequently, that's mostly observed by the surgeon during the surgery, and they'll say, oh, there's something there. I need to make note of that. That's an indication for radioactive iodine and spread to lymph nodes. So my, Those are the two indications. So my surgeon at the time of surgery would have a good idea whether I'm going to need radioactive iodine or not by the number of lymph nodes that are involved with cancer or if the cancer is grown out of the thyroid into the muscles surrounding it and stuff like that. In fact, those observations during the surgery are some of the critical questions that make this yes versus no. So an another reason why we talked in a different video about you really need to pick an expert surgeon, but this is another reason why, because that surgeon is going to have a big role in determining whether I'm going to need radioactive iodine or not. And experience means everything. So is it going to make me sick and make all my hair fall out? I mean, I'm freaked out about that kind of stuff too. So it's not chemotherapy. It's not going to make you sick. It's not going to make your hair fall out. I don't get nauseated like regular chemotherapy? You don't get nauseated. But you need to be prepared for it. And so either the body needs to be hungry for hormones, so your endocrinologist will take you off of all of your thyroid hormone, so you'll be very, very low on thyroid, or sometimes they give you an injection to make your body sort of not feel like, but appear like it's low on thyroid hormone, even though it's not. So um, this is radioactive iodine is something that my surgeon is going to have a big role in determining whether I need or not, but my endocrinologist is going to be managing that. Is that correct? Endocrinologist manages it and usually makes that final decision with you. And, and another reason why you need a good, radio, a good endocrinologist who 
you have a good relationship with because you're going to be seeing them a long time making important decisions. Exactly.